good day to you, my fellow YouTube uh, people. Uh, it's me, Rushumba, Miss Rushumba, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Um, I have a guest here today, as I always do, and we're continuing to allow the black man to speak. But first of all, as you know, um, I need to go to a certain level of rituals. And I first start by giving thanks to the Creator for the opportunity to do my part in our community. So I thank the Creator for allowing me the courage, strength, and awareness to do my part. And I ask the Creator to bless us and bless the guests today for being courageous to sit and talk and share his part of the story. Um, also, as we know, this program was kind of inspired by a good friend that I once knew. He's an ancestor now. His name is Mr. Early Laverne. Mr. Early Laverne. He was a poet. He was a, uh, a man that handled a very difficult life and made it look easy. I helped him to write his first book and only book called A Rainbow of Poems. We only knew each other for a very brief time, two years, 2011 till 2013 when he transitioned. So it's in his honor that I continue to do my part by having this show on his behalf. So Mr. Laverne, we ask your spiritual energy to come and be with us today. Ashe o Ashe. Okay. As you also know, I begin each session not just by acknowledging him, but using one of his poems. And today I will read one of his poems. It's called, What's Happening With You? So here we go. What's happening with you? There, there is my main man. What's happening with you? You know we got some important things to do. I'm glad you're part of my crew. I need a brother with a solid mind. You showed up at the right time. Many of our people has been set up for fail. These young brothers and sisters are all are being set up for jail. Their young minds are being rudely distracted. For countless years, we've been aware of these personal tactics. Many, are, many of our young minds are on the backward move. These miseducators operate quite smooth. Such crude thinkers have great minds, ever attempting to control space and time. Since we can see anything as it truthfully is, let us exercise our powerful will. However, let me hear your personal comments. Don't bomb me out thinking as a Christian saint. True mental leaders must promote and protect their vision. Our strengths are not confined to our governments and saintly religion. Our youths are continually being set up for a major fall. My dear brother, it is our call. Again, I'm inquiring, what's happening with you? Do we fight on for what is elevating and true? Let's push on out this door. We'll discuss these needful issues to the very core. Right on. <laughs> oh, he was clever, oh. <laughs> he was clever how he used words and put it together from the essence of who he was. So thank you, Mr. Laverne, your words live on. Ashe ho, ashe. So, I turn my attention to my guest. I know his first name is Kenny, but Mr. Kenny, go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself and why you chose to even do this session with me. Okay, um, my name is uh, Kenneth Lassiter. I'm 57, will be 58 in a couple months here. And I chose to do this session because of your energy, your spirituality, and then your friendship at the gym, like says, 
we've seen each other at gym before, but we just recently really started talking. So um, just your energy is like, man, I like to gravitate to that kind of energy. And I've always liked that. Some, you know, some people with a lot of energy, I want to gravitate to, especially positive energy. I always gravitate to positive energy. So that's what I wanted to do. But like I said, a little more about myself other than the age and stuff. I'm um, from the East Coast. I'm New York born, um, New Pennsylvania York. raised. Pennsylvania um, raised. Um, out of high school, I was about, spent about a year just kind of falling around, falling around, and then I said, well, maybe the military would be a good spot for me, so I joined the military. And when I joined the military, after doing my training in South Carolina, they sent me to California. So I came to California, I did a four-year stint in the Army, and um, I really liked California. I liked mm. the weather, the people so many things to do yeah. that I said to myself, hmm, I think I'm gonna get out the army and if things don't work out in the civilian world, I'll go back in. Okay. Well, I got out of the army and I had a job in Woodland at a True Value hardware warehouse. I did that for 14 months, but my main job I wanted to do when I got out the army was the Department of Corrections Law Enforcement. Whoa, so Department of Corrections Law Enforcement. Did you make it a career there? I sure did. I, oh, wow. 24 years later, and the next thing I know, I turned 50 and I retired. Ha! Huh. You retired kind of early, 50. Yes. Whoa! So you've been retired a good seven years now. Yes, yes. Um, 2014, I hung it up. No wonder you look so radiant and young. <laughs> I yeah. have that smile because he's free to do what he wants to do. Right. So the Department of Corrections, that's a challenging job. I would imagine there you see a lot of young black males and older males and so forth. As a black man working in that system, was that difficult for you? Um, in the beginning, it was just kind of learning my way and learn the do's and don'ts. And like any other job, you have some people there that's been there for a long time. Some are going to help you through. Some said, no, no one helped me, so I'm not going to help you. Okay. So it was a little bit of both of that, a little 50-50 of that. But um, for the most part, you learn a lot there through you know, a lot of young black men. A lot of them tell you where they made the mistakes. Some, they said, this is the best bet for me because, man, if I wouldn't be in here, I'd be dead, what some tell me. And then there was a lot of them that says, man, I wish I was like you. I would have took a different route. Right. And Sometimes you hear their stories and some of them, and you have a situation where you've seen some leave, you hear about them on the street, they did real good, they got rehabilitated and they're wow. doing real good. And then unfortunately, when you're working there for a long time like I did, you see some come back multiple times. Wow, the recidivism, recidivism is yeah. the word. Yes. Okay, um, did you, do you have a personal story of one that you were able to impact and help to the point that you know you kept up with each other thereafter because you know as a black man seeing lots of black men because that seemed to be the rites of passages for young black men yes and oftentimes it's because they have no good role models out in society right okay yes. then before you answer that question tell me did you come from a two-parent family no i didn't um for the most part, um, growing up, I was in the foster system. Oh. Yes, I was in the foster system. Foster system. Right. So to any uh, anyone listening, you could see that the foster system don't have to be a failure. Now, so you said you were in the system. Yes. You came out, you were one of those that were successful. Yes. You saw you had choices. Yes. You chose the military. Yes. And um, what else did you want to add to that? Um, just um, like you were saying, as far as the foster system, uh, even some of the foster kids that was with me in the foster home, a lot of them were really doing good. So there is a lot of success stories coming out of the foster system. And sometimes it's all about support. Um, it's all about what me and you talked about earlier, positive energy, surround yourself around positive people. Right. And then a lot of times just blazing your own trail. Blazing your own trail because although you have no mother and father to take care of you, you know, one thing I like to do is elevate it to a spiritual level because, you know, you, there was a space made in this world for you. And with that space, you have a choice just like anyone else. Um, some have the guidance of their parents and some have the brokenness of their family too. 
So you don't always necessarily because you have a parent you come you turn out uh, right. Because I would imagine a lot of these youths you saw in the system they came from homes. Yes. Broken homes where yes. they knew their parents. Yes. You know, so sometimes when you have more of a challenge as to get it right, you go straight to the top. Right. So it's it's a lot little harder when you don't see your mother and father there, but it's you you are then focused, yes. more razor focused. Right, right. To get through. Right, right. And going back to what you said too, a, a lot of times when I did work in the system and I talked to a lot of youngsters who was, you know, incarcerated, they were saying, man, if I only would have had a role model in my life. So a lot of them, like you said, single parent homes yeah. and stuff like that too. And they said, they talked to me all the time and says, man, a father figure in my life would have made a world of difference. They said, I love Can my Can you please say that out loud? A, a, fa a father figure in my life would have made a world of a difference. A lot of them told me. So Kenny, sir, what do you think the issue is that makes it very difficult for the black male? Because some of those black male that said that grow up and become fathers that do not show up for their children either. Even though in their time they knew it was difficult when they didn't have it. What do you think is happening that's causing black men, knowing that they missed out on having a father and how good it would be to have had him when they were growing up, but yet when they become fathers, they, they're absent as well. What do you think is happening there, sir? Um, a lot of times I think it just goes d down the line as far as the family structure you come from. And unfortunately, a lot of us black men don't come from a structured family system where we value being parents and being there for our children and loving them and just being them, being there for them every step of the way. Because I'm just going by what I used to see and what I experienced not having a father in my life is that the ones older than you or the ones who are mentoring you, something like that too, or should be mentoring you, they didn't have a good structure. Right. And so what is the origin of all of this not having the good structure? Do you think it's just black people are just not good at being family and parents? Where, what's the origin of that, would you say? I wouldn't say it's black people, but just that we have a high rate. But what's the cause? What's the, the, the root of that? I'll tell you too, if I couldn't put my finger on it. Did you hear what he said? He couldn't put his finger on it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this question. What do you know about the history of our people in this country, in the Western Hemisphere? What do you know about black history, the origin of our history? Well, to tell you the truth, I would say for me, not enough, but I've seen movies, I've seen shows, and I've read books, and I've saw plays and stuff like that too. But um, as, you know, going back even to the days of slavery and stuff like that too, as far as even then, you know, from broken homes and just not um, being there for each other as much as we should. It goes back a long time, but tell you the truth, as far as the origin, as much as I think I might know, it probably tripled that what I need to know. Thank you for that. You know, you said a word, slavery. And people don't know that that word has some deep implications because the effects of it is what resonates from one generation to another. And then to add to it, that you don't know as much as you really should, allows you to perpetuate it from one generation to another. And maybe in the process of it, blaming yourself, blaming the fathers that should be there, blaming the mother that weren't there enough, blaming everything other than the core of it, which is our enslavement. And so I, I must always remind the audience that another people should not know you more than you know you. And I recognize the kindness and gentleness of our people, but I also recognize the naivety, our inability to really spend time studying us. And it's not on purpose, 
because we don't control the media, we don't control the TV, the, the Netflix, the Hulu, the different channels that show us everyone else and show us the brokenness of us, but not show us the truth about us. That is our responsibility. And so um, being able to read is so important because there's an old statement made by African people long ago that if you want to hide information from a black person, you put it in a book. I've heard that saying before. Yeah. And also, if we understand history, right after slavery and during slavery, if you were caught reading, you were going to be in a whole bunch of trouble. And whoever taught you would be in worse trouble. So the knowledge of information is stored in a book. And that information is your liberator. It's your liberator. Uh, we live in a society now that we're being distracted by so much information. And, um, and if you aren't well grounded in who you are, then you, anyone could lead you anywhere and tell you who you are. Matter of fact, the effects of it is a system building its nation on your back. And to add to that, Mr. Kenny, is the greatness of the black man in sports and <laughs> anything. If you decide to be a scientist, you're going to be number one. Right. You know, you're going to do some great stuff, you know, but you must understand how a system gets wealthy on a naive group of people. Yes. But you must also celebrate that through it all, not being aware of your history, we are not extinct. We are still here. <laughs> and going back to what you were saying is social media, it's done a lot of great things. It has opened up a lot of avenues and stuff. But on the flip side, as far as our youth, children, just a lot of stuff going on. Social media has been the devil. And he's correct. Because I, I want you to finish this quote. When you control, who controls the mind controls the, who controls the mind controls what? The man. The man. Or the woman. I got you. So if your mind is controlled by the information that has been put in it, then you're going to control the individual. The individual. So you don't have to ask him uh, to go to the prison. He would do the necessary things to bring him there and don't know how he got there. Right. He never wanted it. He saw everyone else go there, but for some reason, he just matriculates himself right there. Right. You know, um, there's a powerful book written by Carter G. Woodson back in the late, early 1900s. And he says, hey, if you, um, basically what I just said if you if you, if you <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly what it says if you want when you control the mind of an individual he could come to the front door if, by your command but because his training says you should not enter from the front door you will go he will go to the back door no matter how you beckon him to come through the front door and if there is no back door he will create one and go through from that direction. That's the power of the control of the mind. Right. So we need to spend more time uh, understanding our story right. in this America. Right. Otherwise, we become the benefactor of another people. How do we become the benefactor? Shopping, maybe? Eating out? Huh? Playing sports? There are different ways that black bodies are being made other people rich. You know, the greatest basketball, football players, come on. Anything we do, we're going to be number one, right? Yes. And we don't think that our monies that we generate, who benefits? Right. And going back to what you said, too, I like what you said earlier. If you want to hide information from black men, put in a book. And also, too, another one I've heard a lot, too, it makes a lot of sense. I like to say, you know, those of us those of us who don't value history or know history tend to repeat it. 
Did you hear what they tend to repeat it? So that's why we have these generational issues of young men saying, I didn't like not having a father, but yet in my time I did the same thing. Tend to repeat it. Tend to repeat it. So here's my question. What role does K kindergarten to 12th grade play in your ability not to know your history? What role does the school system play in you not knowing your story? Well, I would say this, and we hear about this a lot too, like teachers, as far as the schools you go to and teachers, and even some of the, the best sports players ever from the Michael Jordans, the Steph Currys, the Jim Browns, all that, you hear a lot of athletes say, you know who my role model was? My teacher. Mm. So sometimes it's based on your teachers. You have some teachers who really care about right. teaching you, have you open up the books and keep working with you till you get it right. You get it so right. it's like from kindergarten to 12th grade, right. long as you had good attendance, you was a good student, you tried your best to listen. And whoever your role models were in your life, be it your grandmother, your mother, dad, right. uncle, something like that too. They checked up on you, make sure you was doing your homework and right, all that good right. stuff. But like it says, at the end of the day, boy, a lot of guys say my teacher. Your teacher played a very big part. And that's lovely because you spend a lot of hours in school. There's a lot, of, a matter of fact, that's where you sometimes go to get your meals. Sometimes do you go and you know it's gonna be steady and the rules are in place. Because when our brokenness occur in our home, oh. That's the place that a youth could usually go and somewhat, sometimes feel safe. But the question I ask is, a lot of the reason why we don't know our history is because many of the children come out of the school and cannot read. All right. Yeah. Now you spend a lot of years in school and if you cannot read, what's the effects of not being able to read? Oh, I mean, from employment to getting into some of the best jobs, getting into college, um, not being able to read. I mean, not being able to read can actually cost you your life as you're going down the freeway. Mm. You got to be able to read signs. Correct. There's reading is fundamental, as it's they fundamental. say. Fundamental. And what's the effect of it on relationship between black man and black woman? Oh man, not being able to read can also I mean, it could cause a relationship not even to progress. How does that play out? How would that play out? Certain things that y'all need to do as far as connecting together, as far as bills, trips, one driving down the freeway can't read the signs. Um, if someone is trying to call another one on the cell phone and they're in an area where they need to read information on where they're trying to go you can't even be able to do that so I mean to me it's monumental with just so many things how about self-esteem how about the self-esteem of the individual oh yes you know it could be very low yeah because when you can't read and you're a grown woman or a grown man what does that look like in a society yes. what do you do then right your self-esteem is very low and now that makes you opposite what we talked about or the positive energy not a negative energy and probably a little more shy can't communicate with people and stuff self-esteem i want i don't want to put it at the level of depression but self-esteem is very I mean, very affected, very, very affected by, it. by it yes okay now i want to take it a step further and say a lot of the young men that play football basketball and so forth are they pretty able to are they strong in reading and so forth what do you think about that um yes and no um as funny you said i'm gonna give you a good example there's a guy who played for the washington redskins back in the 80s dexter manley so supposedly he made to pros went through college so many years into the pro, he admitted he can't read. So you're thinking, wait a minute, everybody like high school graduate, college, and he's in the pros, can't read. So it goes back to what me and you talking about teachers, how much your teachers care, how much they value, how much teachers put in extra work for you. I mean, from all the supplies that teachers, teachers is way bigger than people really know. Right. And if the teacher passes you along from, if they don't catch you in kindergarten, if they hopefully they catch you in second, first, uh, second, third, all the way through. But if you got through high school, 
you got to college, but yet you could play ball and make millions. Mm -hmm. So my question becomes, who benefits when you can't read and they just move you along? Who benefits? I say nobody. And I will say this also, the teacher is just there for a paycheck. And but I, when I say no one benefits because even though that teacher's getting a uh, paycheck, it's gonna come back to haunt them too. So to me, I'm saying Rashumba, nobody. Nobody benefits because, and I agree with you because part of that is now you have uh, a young youth, ego is low, um, self-esteem bad, bad, you know, angry, don't know why, and you're gonna meet them on the street now. And he's going to be angry and he's going to, I can't get a job. You know, I got this on my record. So now, you know, you have the handbag and that jewel. Maybe that looks more appealing. So I would say that's on that side is how you, you should fear that you didn't teach him when you should have. But here's the flip side. If you educate the African-American youth and African-American female, you know, what you're going to end up having is people like Carter G. Woodson. Mm -hmm. He invented the traffic light. Yes. Uh, you will have people like, um, um, no, no, Garrett Morgan did the traffic light. I'm oh, sorry. Richard Spike did the gear shift. And he also did the multi barrel shotgun. And a whole host of other black inventors. I challenge the system if they really care to make sure that each youth um, that goes through the system comes out being able to read and write so America could really be great again. But the reason why a system will make sure a class, because we know integration is now the key right now. Right. It's not like in the 1950s when the classrooms were segregated, right, schools. Right. It's now integrated. But it appears that we did better doing segregation than we did now. No. And there is a reason who controls the mind controls, controls the, the man. man. Woman, yes. So there's a, a, a sinister energy that want to make sure we don't learn. Because, like I said, when you control your own mind, right. and it's, you're not going to ask for a permission to do things. You're going to just do it. Right. And, uh, and so we need to figure out ways to rise up so we could be a benefit to all people. Because there's still uh, a level of, we don't necessarily want you to be able to work your way out of this paper bag. You know? Exactly. <laughs> because, hey, got to say it, prison is, is a business. Right. And it goes back to you know what we're talking about today, too. Another great thing I like, it takes a village to raise a child. Yes, it does. It takes a village. It takes a village. Yeah. But if the village is broken, if everyone do not know the story of our history, history right. you know, the village has gotten smaller because technology has taken its place. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are running from the village because the village work is very heavy. Exactly. You know, there's more brokenness. So I'm going to ask you this question. You know, we're living at a time that there are a lot of homeless people on the streets, yes. Kenny. Yes. And most of them that you see on the street, what culture would you say they are? African American. African American, male or female? Male. So what's happening there? Can you, do you think it's attached to what we're talking about when, you know, you're not being held up straight through school and you've been pushed through a system and now you're out? What, what, what do you think happened to make it? So many things that you can put your finger on. The economy, I mean, the, the cost of living is one of them. But when I say so many things you could put your finger on is um, homeless people, whether I've talked to them here on the street, I've even ran into one downtown Sacramento that I had in the pen. Mm. I've seen them, uh, I've seen them down there. Some of them want to be homeless. They don't want to work. That's another bad situation. Well, man, we can say for another day. Um, some of them don't like rules and regulations. And then some go back to what me and talked about earlier. There are some out the streets we know, like, you know, um, maybe they were always in some trouble. They were maybe the black sheep of the family, as they say. So a family gave up on them. They have no kind of support. So since they can't get just that one break, they find themselves on the street. And one thing about homelessness that people say a lot of times too, and it pertains to you, pertains to me, a lot of us. There are, to me, Rashumba, millions of people one pay paycheck away. Yes. 
one paycheck away from being homeless. So homelessness, people should not never look at homeless like I will never be. I'm so far from there. Yeah. No, yeah. millions of people one paycheck away. So like I said, there's so many things we put our finger on. Comedy is one of them. Some people don't want no rules or regulations, right. and some people just flat. Out, they will tell you too. I don't want to work. I don't want to go work for the man. I don't want to work for nobody. So they choose that. And then some people are very comfortable being homeless, more so than being into rules and regulations and paying taxes, um, enforcements for neighborhoods and all that too. They're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. And um, I agree with you. But, you know, sometimes we say the cause, mm -hmm. we must be clear what the cause is mm -hmm. to the effect. To the effect. So what cause the situation for them to be homeless. That's the effects of the cause. Yes. And so I would think that, you know, again, we started off by saying, how much do you know about the history of your people? Right. So when we say most people are one paycheck away from homelessness, and yet we find that the ones that are on the street mainly are black men. Yes. And we already said that, you know, the effects of their education on them, uh, you know, not having a father. Yes. Yes. So these become the cause. The cause. Mm -hmm. Not knowing history, mm -hmm. so they could navigate themselves in this system. Mm -hmm. And so when things become overwhelmed, you know, and we didn't even touch on it, the effects of lack of education and knowledge of, you know, being able to be a stronger human being in society, mm -hmm. the effects of it on the relationship between the black woman and the black man. Yes. And going back and the to, brokenness yes. in there and when the black woman gets kind of fed up she's like okay i'm done yep. so that brings about the single parenthood mm -hmm. so being done with the black man whose responsibility then to say i got you brother i got you father mm -hmm. i got you uncle yes so when you say there's a lot more black men on the street mm -hmm. the question is it takes a village so what role and what responsibility do the rest of us, not blood related to this individual, right. have to play? A, a lot. A lot of, there's a lot that we can do, a lot more that we can do to uplift. There's a lot more that we can give as far as even just our time, if not money. Um, but it goes back to what I'm saying, and I'm really, really bent on this is, um, some of them, not all of them, Shuma, they gotta want it. Yeah. They gotta want it. You know. Yeah. You know? And I want to give you one quick story, kind of like it's in what we're talking about today. I was working at the correctional facility in Vacaville. Had a guy, older guy, and he was in my unit. Didn't get into too much trouble. Was kind of, I must say, the model they made. Just yeah. you know, did everything he was supposed to do. So he went on. He got out. He paroled. He went to the streets here in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And me being a news junkie, watch a lot of news, I'm sitting at home one time and I'm watching the news. And there's a string of robberies in downtown Sacramento. And they finally caught him. And I see them leading him into the cop car and I jumped up. That's him. <laughs> That's one of my guys I had in my oh unit. My so they brought him back. And like I told you earlier, I always like to talk to him, hear their yeah. story. Whatever. So and it's interesting what he told me. He says, I got out. Applied for jobs, applied for unemployment, applied for Social Security. Everybody turned it back on me, so I went shopping. Did you hear what he just said? No, the system did not support him when he came out. So where was the village in this? So we understand the system was not going to support him. That's why there's a system for him to go to when he does decide not to do what he needs to do. Exactly. But I challenge us, yes. the comfortable ones, the ones that understand. Yes. What is our role for our brother, man, and our sister? What have we built? Right. Have we gotten comfortable and say, oh, I'm, I'm all right now. It's about, you know, I, I'm getting mine. I got my house. I got my car. I'm good. But there's an old statement is in my Caribbean island, if they come for you in the morning, mm -hmm. they will come for me in the evening. In the evening. So there's, we must understand what the village means. Right. What the village means what because mean? he tried. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, if you are not, think about the foster child. The only thing about the foster child is that he's young. Yes. So 
so people will be more able to work for him and get paid for doing it. So, so they get, it. yeah. Yes. So when they're when you get to a certain age, they're done. Mm -hmm. So yes. what happens to the mind of that youth now turn man mm -hmm. and go out there when, right. when n nobody to support him? Right, right. And then it goes again back to Kenny. What is our history? Right. What does their history say? Right. And we must know why history mm -hmm. caused a people to live life this way. Mm -hmm. And once again, like it says, if we don't buy or don't know it, we will repeat it. Yes. Exactly. Repeat well, it. I just want to say to you that I put my, my, my money or my energy where my words are. Yes. You know, for nine weeks now, I... Every week until my birthday, which is in August, yes. I go out and I, I cook good home cook meal. Yes. And I go out in the street and I give it to a homeless individual. Yes. Because I can't sit here and talk about the things that I'm talking about and not do my part. Right. Because I am part of that village. Right. And so I, I cannot blame the helpless, the homeless, the abandoned. Right. I have to do my part, and I know I, I may not be able to feed them all, but right. the one or two that I'm able to feed are 10 or 11 like I did last week, and I feel so good so about good. it. Right, right, right. You know, so I want to be the change that I see in the world. Right, right. And it's not my responsibility to, to say why you're there. Right. My responsibility is to show up in a human sense. Right, right. To do my part. Right. If you're going to talk it, you're going to walk it. All right. All right. So, you know, um, tell me about your travels. Are you a traveler? <laughs> um, yes, mainly um, since I retired more so. But um, even before then, you know, I like, I'm a, I'm a sports guy, so I'm big on sports. and. You know, my hometown is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so okay. I'm a big Steelers fan, so I go to, go to games and stuff, different okay. cities, you know. Okay. I just went to Pittsburgh in um, December, and also went to um, L.A. for the Steelers like that, and I've been on cruises. Whoa. I like to go, I, I like Vegas, um, wow. I like different cities, so I like to, you know, being 57 yeah. years old, about to turn 58, yes. I like to live it to the fullest, That's and correct. you know, and I feel, you know, in my heart that I'm, you know, I, gave four years of my life to my country, you yes, know, as yes. a veteran now, um, law and, enforcement. And I'm going to have you pause right there. What he just said is huge. Um, he's given time in the military to this country. Yes. And that's one of the biggest honor you can give a country is when you serve time for it. And a lot of people may not know this, and this is an important thing to know about history. Mm -hmm. There's been no other culture in this country that has fought in a war, been and served this country from the conception like the black man, like the black man. A aligned with the white man. Right. So that really puts you right up there as ownership to this land. Right. And I, I could understand um, your commitment sometimes to do certain things within it generationally. Right. But you must understand certain things. That's why history is important. Very. And um, so, yeah. Uh, have you traveled to Africa? No, at least okay. not yet. Okay. Do you know that uh, Ghana right now, well, from 2019, Ghana, Ghana um, has offered African people throughout the world, right. Caribbean, America, to come there, and if they choose, they have a stake in that land that over there land to buy. Wow, yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Nigeria. It's been a few years, and Ghana. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when you step foot there, you think your smile is nice now. Whoa. Whoa, wow. Huh? There's a certain happiness they will see to have you come back. You must make it a time to go there. You must make yeah. time to go there. I think yes. you're, you're not, you haven't traveled until you travel to the motherland. <laughs> to the motherland, I hear you, okay. <laughs> yeah, until you travel there with the food, the people, the clothes, the rhythm, now you understand who right. you are. Right, right, right. So I hope one day you'll get the opportunity to go there. Right. Is there any questions you want to ask me? Yes, okay. Um, as far as you, from time in Jamaica, 
and being here in the United States, some of that, what's some of uh, the biggest differences you see from, you know, Jamaica culture to being in America? Okay, that's a good one. Now, I, I want to say I've been in this country for a very long time. Yes. I came here as a little girl. Yes. But in my 20s, I started to go back almost every year. Yes. Um, what I saw in Jamaica is Jamaica is pre predominantly black people. Yes. There are you know other ethnicities there, but predominantly the base is African people. Um, what I see there is the people, it's kind of hard because the people of the 1990s and so forth, when I started to go into people now, has changed a lot. Yes. Because uh, Jamaica is very dependent mm -hmm. on the first world countries like America and England. Yes. And so, therefore, everything about the people is about to get the money. Right. How can I get the money? Uh, they've kind of lost the value of village, community. And I believe that's an uh, infiltration of technology. You know, when technology comes in, you could be a poor person, but everybody has a phone. And the phone has a way of telling you that you should not be comfortable where you're at. And what they, what they fail to see is that not too many people could wake up and see that beautiful blue sea. That they travel thousands of miles to come and spend a lot of money to come and enjoy. Right. They forgot that in that sea, you get the best seafood. <laughs> you know, you could climb up in the mountain, you don't have winter. And, you know, so who controls the mind? Controls the people. people. Because the people feel vulnerable and they don't feel like they, they're enough. And so they all want to come here. Right, right. <laughs> or right. there, somewhere, but there. Right. So um, I've been here a long time. Oh, so God. the question would be, well, if, if it's that good, why don't you go back there? Well, I would like to say that my people no longer recognize me because I have changed. I'm kind of one of those on the fence. I'm not fully an American, and I'm not fully a Caribbean. Gotcha. I have changed to be something in between. So, um, but the thing I challenge everyone to be is more knowledgeable of their system, their self, their, self. their history. Right. If you don't know what happened to you when you were young, you know, what, what, what would your life be like if you didn't know what happened to you when you left home and left so home. forth? Right, right. As a matter of fact, you, you know, not knowing your parents, you may not even know your genetic history. Right. You know, what, what kind of health issues running both families those right. things so this is where you can see right. that knowing mm -hmm. the foundation of your people is right. quite important a lot of times doctors will ask you that physical you know does such and such run in your family and you might oh i don't know you know exactly. so, yeah, so, yeah. so the same applies to the history of african people in the americas right and also the history of the people that brought us here in 1619 you right. must know them as well. Exactly. Because, you know, we have an interesting time that we're living right now in the 21st century. So much is going on, gun violence, politics. You know, we know the story right now. Right, right. So, got another question for you. Here's a good one, too. And I feel that uh, a lot of African-American people, we don't talk about enough. And a lot of us don't take it serious enough. Me and you at the gym, we're talking. You told me your age. Yes. Someone would never guess that. Right. And looking at a lot of African American people, yes. what is your key to health and nutrition? What habits do you have as far as, you know, some people like, you know, the Delaney sisters, mm -hmm. they used to say they used to take garlic, mm -hmm. you know, so, that, so, you know, we don't talk about it enough. Right. So what would you share that is something that you feel that you've been doing and we can, from exercise, food, nutrition, walking, jogging, meditation, mm -hmm. what is your key to how you, I'm looking at okay. you now, what's your key? Well, first of all, it's the creator. Yes. 
first of all is the creator. Second is knowing that African people are the first in creation. I'm just saying, Africa is the cradle of civilization. So if you understand that and really believe the truth about it, then you understand that the way you've been structured is on a higher level than everyone else. So if your mind is clear and you know the story, do you know the truth, then everything else will follow. Diet is, in, is number one. What you put in your body, your sacred body that carries that sacred spirit has got to be quality. You can't allow strangers to cook your food for you with their energy putting just anything into your mouth. And if you do allow that, the question is, you don't value you. You don't value yourself if you allow other people to feed you. And so that's number two. But when you know yourself, you protect yourself. You take good care of yourself. Right. You put yourself to bed early. You don't overdo anything because you're protecting the sacredness of this body, of this life. Because hopefully when you understand all of that, then you also understand that you're here to do more than just consume. Yes. You're here also to teach, to empower, to do your part. Hey, because if you're the first, come on, people are looking at you and learning from you. So, um, yeah, it's just being conscious. Now, when we're young, we don't know. But those young age sometimes because of our challenges, not knowing our history, uh, we have to learn from our mistakes. Yes. yes but once you see, you cannot unsee. And if you cannot unsee, then you must act. And if you choose not to act, well, there's dialysis. Uh, there is taking that insulin daily. There is all the various things people make money off of you being slacked and not doing what it is you're supposed to do that takes time and energy and courage so that you can live your best self. I'm not going to tell you my age, and also but one, you will I wanna, know my knowledge. And I want to add to like what she's talking about too as far as you know like um, any kind of sickness or illness we're going through. There are so many people suffer from depression people me and you might see all the time we talk to them might have a glitzy smile like me or you we just never know sometimes unfortunately we hear it too late well you know Rashumba Kenny y'all didn't even know he or she was suffering with depression <gasps> yeah. I would have never know so yeah. remember there's medication for it there's a lot of help it's sometimes with some people it's hard to tell that they're going through depression you would have never known like that I mean, we could think of somebody like, um, what's her name, Spade, Anne or K. Spade, you know. Yes. There's certain people like that that's going through depression. So that is something that we really, really need to get a hold of. Get a yeah. hold of because a lot of people suffer from it. Well, and I wanted to say that depression has to do with a denial of what reality really is. It is. You see what I'm saying? So if you deny that you live in a toxic society, if you deny that things that you see coming at you is not right, if you deny that you're staying in a place you don't belong for too long, if you deny that you're supposed to really try your best and change your life and then on top of it, have faith that when you ch change in different direction, you will get through. So number one, we forgot the creator, no matter how Allah, God, Muhammad, whatever. Whenever you have to, number one, recognize that there's a greater power at work at any given time. And we must find our way through the maze of life, through all the challenges. So depression is a form of giving up. Yes. A feeling that this, you know, I'm, this body, I wish it would go away so I can go away, but the body is not going to die. Instead, you have to, until it's ready. Right. <laughs> Don't be so isolated. You know, yeah. but we are taking in too much information by right. the techie world. Yes. And we're not socializing enough. We're not talking like we're doing right Even now. Even though, like we talked earlier, social media is at an all-time high, but still, you're not talking about, talking about everything else on social media. Yeah, we're being controlled yeah. by the clones that yes. has taken our minds. So we need to spend more time in meditation, in quiet, eating right, 
spending time around healthy people like you mentioned before mr kenny right and um and speaking to our creator more turn off the media yep. you know don't let the media turn off i don't watch movies i watch documentaries but i don't watch movies because movies is another way of sealing the, 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 the story that I'm down here and everybody else is up here. That my natural locks is not beautiful enough. That my chocolate skin is not pretty enough. So whose narrative am I using to define myself? So when you know history, what happened to the African people that are here and in the Caribbean, and I'm going to throw this out to you. The largest population of African people taken out of Africa was sent where? Which country? North America, Caribbean, or South America? And if you could name the country, that would be great. <laughs> so I'm going to see what he knows about history because everyone should know this kind of stuff. I won't say Caribbean. Not the Caribbean, uh, <laughs> but you, Brazil. Brazil, okay. Oh, Brazil wow. got the largest percentage of enslaved people taken out of Africa went to Brazil. If I would have said that one, because I would have said either Caribbean or America, and Brazil was the answer, see? Yes. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters, please, it's imperative that you start tuning in to our story and what happened. Because we're still here because there is generations before that took the whip, took the pain, took the suffering, so we can be here today. So if we believe that it's all about bling bling, showing what I got, flash flash, we're making another people wealthy. Now we go home with depression because those things will never make you content inside. It's only an illusion. So we're gonna wrap it up. I'm trying to find my little <laughs> thing here. Uh, we're going to wrap it up and uh, did you want to close by saying anything Mr. Kenny because what I usually end with is a poem yes well I want to say um, thank you for having me um, thank you for being such a positive person who I just really recently started talking to a lot and um, and thank you for doing this and stuff because this is very empowering yes, and you. like I said if something like this can just help one person yes. you've done a great job yes. thank you so much thank yes. you and what he just said is in line with my little statue here. Each one must help one. You know, I could sit at home and say, I got it made. I got everything I need. But I am here to be my brother's and sister's keeper. And therefore, helping each other will help the world because, hey, you know, even our European brothers and sisters want to be set free and liberated they want to relax and say ah, we could finally face the truth about all of this they want to be let free too but their freedom is determined by our freedom so i'm going to finish with my poem as i always do it's called rambling mind my mind keeps rambling on about what I got and what is gone. Reality can slap you in the face. A stark reminder of your hard work looking now like a big disgrace. It's time for the warriors of the free to decide what it will be. Destruction or resurrection? For crucifixion has long gone. Rising up is all that's left now. Wolf man. The plan was never to stay in this toxic way. Living invisible each day amongst the numerous broken spirits slowly drifting away. What can I say? It certainly isn't my way. For each and every day begins with prayer. That's the sure way to combat hate. By breathing love all over this place. The courageous one must now execute their plan. The future world we want to see must be conceived inwardly. Recognize we must. The 
a unique design called us, built to overcome any obstacle thrown our way. Have faith in who you be, not the materialistic world we come to see that divides beings from beings, while daily being told your reward is money, the big green dollars. That be your life's goal, and it's all you will need to feel whole as you grow from young to old. Fantasy is what's left with we to decide the future of our family. It's Sankofa time to readjust your hearts and mind, allowing the divine to empower we at any given time. It's all a change of mind. Your dreams will climax in time. Asheo, amen. <laughs>